What does a laser owner want most? A more powerful laser! But are you sure that a more powerful laser is also a better laser? Hi mate and welcome to my garage. In this video I will tell you some things that only experts know about laser diode for laser engraving and clarify some myths such as uh, what about the real power of a laser diode? Are Chinese laser reliable or not? Is a more powerful laser a better laser? 40 watt laser. Is it a scam? Can metal be engraved with a laser diode? And uh, do I really need eye assist? The heart of an engraver is the laser model, which is made of four parts. Diode, lens, heat sink, and driver. A laser diode is a small electronic component that is not intended to be used in the gravity process. In fact, if we read the technical sheet of laser diode, we will never find laser engraving in its application. But he doesn't know, and so he engraved the same. What about the real power of a laser diode? We can find laser module up to 40 watt. But the most powerful diode in visible wavelength is only 7 watt. Therefore, this is because sellers are smart and try to attract the buyer with higher power and lower price. This implies lying about true power. The true power is the optical output from the laser. The one declared by the seller is the electrical input power that includes conversion losses due to driver efficiency, power loss in it, and often also the current used to power the cooling fan. Are Chinese laser reliable or not? Well, it's like asking if pizza outside Italy is good or not. Definitely, most pizza outside Italy is of poor quality. But lucky, we can find good pizza, even outside Italy, as well as we can find bad pizza in Italy. Most laser modules, even those you find on eBay or Amazon, even from an European store, are made in China. An exception is a couple of shops from the United States, DTR LPF, which sell only spare parts, and Barnet Unlimited. Both are very reliable, and the Russian guy who is doing a great job in producing high quality models, called Endurance Laser. However, they only sell laser models and do not sell entire engraver. So, here are some suggestions to not get scammed when buying engraver or model. First, don't trust an anonymous seller and try to understand if the brand corresponds to a real company, to a unique and original product, or it's simply a copy of someone else's design. For example, Hortur, Atomstack, Nege, they have a unique design copied by many anonymous competitors. The difference is that a brand tries to sell reliable product, because if its products are poor, its brand will be ruined and no longer sell. An anonymous product don't give you the same warranty. Second, check for after sale support. Search the internet and see if you can find a forum, a Facebook page, a site, an email address on which the manufacturer can be contacted and provide assistance. The DIOS module can break, they can be failed, or you may simply not understand how to use them. After sale assistance is fundamental. Third, do not trust who does not tell you the optical power. Honest seller also declare optical power of the diodes, not only electrical power. Fourth, do not trust too high power and too low cost. There is something wrong with this. Is more powerful laser a better laser? The way laser engraver work is by concentrating the light in a really small dot. It's a little like when you use the magnifying lens with the sun. Smallest is the dot, more powerful is the engraving. Here is where the deception is. A laser diode without a focusing lens would not produce a point by its nature. He would make a bar. Higher is the laser power, wider is the bar. In technical, we call this issue divergence. This means that high power laser diodes are more difficult to focus into spot. This is a comparison test between the trees left by 7 watt, 15 watt, and 20 watt laser from Ortu and 20 watt from Atomstack on a piece of alundized aluminium.
As you can see, the trace left by the 20 watt diode is asymmetric, exactly because the rectangular component of its beam is very strong. By measure spot size, using image pixel as a reference, we can now compute the real power density as watt per millimeter square. Let's enlarge the image and calculate the size of the spot. So, here is the result. We can think of power density as the equivalent of the tip of a needle to the tip of a nail. Heated with a lighter, even with less flame, a needle is much more hot than a nail. To answer the initial question, is a more powerful module a better module? It depends on the use you have to do. If you want to make very precise and thin engraving, a lower power model is better because of the smaller point. For example, this cardboard is engraved with 7W module, which is 1.6W optical. You cannot absolutely obtain a result so sharp with an high power laser. But if you need to cut or deep engrave resistant material, you need much more raw power, so it's better for you to buy a more powerful module. My personal opinion is that a 50 watt module is a good compromise of raw power, spot size and power density. You can find some link to module and the engraver I use for this video here in the description. 40 watt laser module, is it scam? I not have yet the opportunity to try one of these modules like the Nature 40 watt. I am very suspicious of this declared power because as we have seen, the most powerful diode is 7 watt, which can correspond to 25, 30 watt, but not certainly not 40. If you have one of this module, please write me your impression in the comment. I would be happy to make a comparison video if Nature want to send me one of these modules. Can metal be engraved with a laser diode? The answer is no. If your reason for purchasing a laser engraver is to engrave metal, a diode engraver is not what you need to buy. You need a fiber engraver, which costs a little more. But you can engrave anodized aluminum, going to remove the anodized surface layer, how I did in this video. If you search YouTube, you will find someone who engraves steel with laser diode. Yes, it is possible, but it's not easy and it's not what these engravers are designed for. Do I really need air assist? I want to answer with a simple video. Here you see two identical engravers with the same 20W laser model. On one of them I have mounted a homemade air assist system. The cut made with air assist is faster, cleaner and can go deep. I have been able to cut playwood up to 10 mm. You don't need a professional air assist system. Even a simple air pump with a straw, it can do it for you. I built mine with an aquarium air pump and a straw for about $40. I use a model Hylea ACO318 and work fine. You can find it on Amazon. I get mine from AliExpress because it was cheaper. You can find the link of the pump below in the description. And that's all! To stay up to date on new videos and laser tips, subscribe to the channel and activate notifications.